Right. Welcome back. What's up, Horace? What's up, guys? Sorry, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty. That's just what happens when you're running, and uh, we're getting so many shares and comments and things like that. So thank you, guys. We keep crushing the system. Uh, we appreciate all of you. Um, so thank you for being on. Any problems, just send me a message. Most of you are going to be friends with me on Facebook. If not, um, send me a message. We'll get it. Um, if you're having issues with seeing the broadcast or the old one is still going or something like that, um, shoot me a message, and I'll try to kind of work it out on my end. Um, but we're going to take the, you know, the focus away from all the issues we're having and focus on the positive. Um, we have the wonderful Brenda Geary on with us now. Um, I'll kind of let Lane take over and Brenda share her story. Awesome. Awesome, Brenda. Well, let me just start out by saying that that post that you made yesterday shows how amazing and genuine and loved of a person you are. Before we get to the fun business part, um, you know, you, I think you're over like 300 likes and comments and it was just amazing to see the love that you have and it's because of the person that you are. So we're very blessed to have you as a contributor for the book and, um, you know, a lot of your success has come from the person you've become. Um, and some of that is through the obstacles that you've overcome. And, um, you know, when I look at the word lane change, within that there's challenge. Um, and you are a woman of faith as well. And we're told that we're gonna run into problems and that life's not necessarily gonna be easy, um, but it will shape us to be who we need in order to succeed and create the results we want to hopefully bless other people, which is what you're doing. Um, yeah. in your current business. And you've done that a lot. So if you want to share maybe the, the the shift you made from kind of corporate world and being pretty high up in the corporate world as a, as a African-American female, um, and then why did you change? What was the catalyst behind that? And just some of the lessons that you learned within that transition. Um, hey, thank you guys. I'm so excited to be here this today. Um, so, you know, my transition, I had always grown up corporate America. I was taught you go to school, you, you know, get a good job and, um, give me one second guys. Sure. I'm sorry. Randy. Um, hey, oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Yeah. Um, so sorry guys. Um, I'm in someone's backyard and we just had a little bit of a distraction. That's okay. Um, just <laughs> go with the flow. So, you know, my background is corporate America. You know, I got my bachelor's in speech comm. I got my master's in human resources leadership. And I went to work for a Fortune 5 company, um, a really, really tough environment. Um, you know, it challenged me a lot. I'm the, I'm the kind of person that loves a great challenge. And I loved what I did. I had several really high level jobs that stretched me. Um, you know, every job that I ever went into inside little girl, Brenda felt like, Oh my gosh, what am I getting myself into? But the bigger Brenda said, you know what? I can do this. So I always went into a job thinking, wow, what am I getting myself into? But, you know, surrounded myself with amazing people. Um, I was coachable. I reached out to people for guidance. And I really think that that has a lot to do with who I am today and how I've been able to be really super successful. So, yeah. you know, my corporate career was amazing. I've been to some of the most amazing places. Um, I never would have thought, you know, when we get into my background, you hear a little bit about where I come from and the fact that I've done some of the things that I've done and been to some of the most amazing places around the world. I never would have pictured that for myself um, when you really think about where I've come from, but amazing corporate career. And then I got really, really sick. Um, you know, one of my passions is, my whole health and wellness platform because of the fact that I got so sick and that totally changed um, my career path. Um, so um, left the corporate world to really focus on my health and found myself now with this amazing entrepreneurial uh, journey that I'm on now. Yeah. And I remember specifically when we were talking about your chapter, you had kind of, I think, prayed about and really wanted to be in warm weather, partly for your yeah. health. Um, just share that because I think it's so important for people to really understand that they can vision cast their life and they can kind of create it uh, based on yeah. their thoughts. So share just a little bit about, you know, what that was, where you currently live and why that ended up coming to be. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, in 93, when I was graduating with my master's degree, I had actually interviewed in San Diego, fell in love with San Diego, um, left with an offer in hand, went back to Chicago thinking, okay, well, I'm going to be, you know, when I get my degree and I'm done, I'm going to move to San Diego. I've got my job. But what was interesting is that 
the next interview I had was with the company I ended up with. And that company had an amazing, amazing executive leadership training program. So I had to make a decision between the location at the time or the career and the foundation that they were offering me from a you know professional development perspective. So I went with the professional development, I went with the career, but what's interesting is, you know, almost 19 years or 17 years into my career, uh, um, when I was really getting sick, I was in Chicago, um, you know, I was tired of the snow, I was tired of the gray skies, I was really super depressed because of the environment, and a job opening came open in San Diego. So here I am, you know, fast forward, I'm living in the place that I had always envisioned living, and what attracted me to San Diego is I'm, you know, when people get to know me, I mean, my personality is I've got a big personality. Um, I love life and San Diego is the place that resonates with me. I'm a sunshine person. And so I'm living in the place that is perfect for me now. Awesome. Yeah. And I heard you um, kind of yelling at Gary, or uh, I said Gary, um, Randy. Um, just a few minutes ago, and he's he's played a really big role in your life. Um, yep. And your love story is amazing, and I think it shows a lot about him as a as a person as well. Um, so if you're willing to talk kind of about that relationship and how life kind of came full circle, because um, I think it's so beautiful how you guys ended up <laughs> ended up together, um, but also the beauty of you know it's very few and far between of couples that work together, that love spending time together, and that are you guys are really building a legacy and you've become amazing leaders. And I've seen your growth in your team um, and you and the investment you've made traveling Gary's, um, you know, you guys spent a lot of time investing into your future. Um, and it, it's not without, I'm sure some challenges and, and relationship, um, you know, issues I would, I would assume just because I am newly engaged and build a business with her. And so just maybe kind of just tie the, the pieces together for people don't, that don't know your story about Randy Maybe mm -hmm. sitting at McDonald's that one day, um, <laughs> you know, and the, and the guy that he met that, that ultimately maybe even potentially saved your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Randy and I, we have a long history. We actually met uh, back in 1982, um, and that was the start of our story. He actually catcalled me. He was on the roof of a, um, a elementary school. He catcalled me, and then about <laughs> and I just kept walking. And about two weeks later. Um, I was at my part-time job, McDonald's, which is a big part of my story. And he was there and we looked at each other and you know, we just kind of kept looking at each other. We ended up dating that summer and then life just happened. You know, we went our separate ways, um, but we, there was always this really amazingly strong connection. You know, um, we knew that we were meant to be together. Um, and so, um, you know, we lost each other for 22, 23 years. And in 2008, Jesus. I actually, um, you know, was just kind of thinking about him. And I was like, you know, I need to find him. So I actually Googled him. I found him on Google. Um, we, I called him. We actually talked for seven and a half hours, yeah. um, basically catching up with 22 years of life practically um, on one phone call. And we knew it was our time. So we got together and we got married in 2009. And, you know, he's my soulmate. He's, my, the, he's the love of my life. He's my soulmate. And so, you know, we got married. He moved to San Diego. He's a retired police officer. Um, from the city of San Antonio, and he moved to join me in San Diego. Um, and when he, when we reconnected, he knew that I was sick. Um, but what he didn't know was that I was going to get even sicker um, as mm -hmm. you know after we got married. So we moved to San Diego, and what ended up happening is I ended up taking a retirement from my job because of how sick I. I'd gotten, and I ended up, you know, my full-time job basically became going to doctor's appointments, you know, uh, three to four doctor's appointments uh, a week, just, you know, going from specialist to specialist, trying to figure out what was going on with me. And, um, you know, here we are, we've reconnected, and, you know, his job is all of a sudden taking care of me, you know, laundry, how all household chores, there was nothing that we could plan on with 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 um any level of surety because my body was so compromised that we would make plans and we would be walking out the door and all of a sudden we would have to stop because all of a sudden i would hit the wall and i would have to look at him and say 
hey, Randy, we can't go. I need to go lay down. Um, mm -hmm. Or we would be, you know, getting ready to drive somewhere, I, you know, and I, you know, kind of be throwing up or what have you midway, you know, on the way to our location and we'd have to turn around. So, you know, for us to connect, uh, I really believe that he, he didn't have any friends. So I said, you know, why don't you go out and get a job? Um, why don't you just go out and meet people? And he was feeling nostalgic. And I know you guys might think this is funny, but he was feeling nostalgic. So he actually was at McDonald's and he uh, was sitting there and, and this is how I really believe that this is how life happens, not by accident, but mm -hmm. the, the McDonald's restaurant was completely full. Um, a 24 year old young man, you know, Ryan Jackson, who I'll love forever, um, just said, you know, hey, can I sit in this seat here? Um, and they got to talking and he offered up, um, you know, they, they were both found out that they were entrepreneurs. And he said, hey, would you look at it? ABC said, probably heard this story before. It's a napkin story. He wrote the link yep. to this uh, investigative report on a napkin and Randy got home. He watched it. I was in bed, you guys. I had gotten to the point where I could only get out of bed maybe four or five hours a day. That was my quality of life. So he says, you got to watch this. And I watched it. And, you know, what we were looking at just made sense to me. It made sense to me. And I said, I have nothing to lose by giving this product a try, I have everything to gain and it absolutely changed my life. So I really believe that, you know, people come into our lives for a reason and, you know, not to shut off people. If Randy had said no to Ryan that day, I honestly don't know if I would be here today and that's, you know, that's not an exaggeration. Um, and then, you know, shortly thereafter I was diagnosed with breast cancer and um, that was another, you know, that's another whole journey, you know? I don't know if you want to get into that, Blaine. Yeah, absolutely. I just real quick. Um, yeah. You know, her chapter is is called the golden opportunity. Um, you know, based on that, and you can, guys can see the quote about faith. Uh, it's something that, you know that we have to trust that we can't necessarily see. We just right before you, Brenda, we had Ron Klein on. He won Inventor of the Century. He created the magnetic strip on the credit card. You know, Ron from absolutely um, thing. Yeah. Some of Greg's Greg's events, and uh, you know, he just invented this new app for the blind. Um, which is allowing them to see. And I think faith is that which we can't see, you know, and trusting that. And you you did that. So yeah, I'd love you for you to go into that journey because you're you're really empowering women uh, who have gone through some of what you've gone through. But just in general, you're you're changing amazing lives with the the health company that you're involved with. And mm -hmm. you're you and your husband, Ryan Randy, and your entire team are growing so fast because of the heart that you have behind what you do. So yeah, we'd love for you to share that for people that are maybe going through some of the same struggles. Yeah, you know, I mean, it was interesting when I was I was diagnosed with breast cancer in November of 2011, just two days before Thanksgiving, and I had had a you know a mammogram. My mother uh, actually had had cancer three times, so I was always really you know very religious about getting my mammograms done, um, etc. And I you know hadn't heard back. They did a needle biopsy, and I hadn't heard back from them, and so I actually um, called the hospital. And, um, you know, forced them to tell me my, feet, you know, the results because they said that the doctor wasn't in and I'd have to wait until after the holiday. And I was, you know, forceful and wanting to find out what was going on. People were telling me, you know, don't worry, no news is good news. But there was just something in my gut that was telling me, you know what, this is not going to be good news. So, um, uh, you know, found out I had cancer. And again, I'm a positive person and I was, you know, and I never have ever said, why me, why me? I just knew that it was part of my journey. And then I also just figured that God had a bigger purpose for me, you guys. I just, that was my thought process is that I'm supposed to have a bigger footprint in this world of ours and just took it in stride. So um, we found out that the, um, the breast cancer was in my lymph nodes. So I did make a personal decision to go through chemotherapy and radiation therapy. And once again, um, Randy was my rock. Once again, Randy was my rock. And the other thing I found out about my cancer journey was just the amazing people in my life that stood up and were there for me. Just people in my circle of friends and family that were just there for me unconditionally um, to support me through the journey. So um, one of the things that was interesting is when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I remember telling Randy, I don't wanna be one of those people. And Randy said, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, um, he goes, I want you to be one of those people that survives. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't mean that. I meant that sometimes when you tell a person that you've had cancer or that you have cancer, they immediately get this look on their face. And it's um, this like, gosh, you know, or, or the sorry look on their face. And I didn't want anyone to ever feel sorry for me. 
I'm just not that type of person. And so um, initially I was kind of resisting speaking about the breast cancer journey, um, but now I've embraced it because I do realize that there are many women, there are many people out there that need to hear my story, that need to have what I do now is I do speak to women that have been recently diagnosed with cancer because a lot of times when you have a cancer diagnosis, um, your oncologist has never gone through it or they give you these, um, these books and they give you all this information, but reading about it and then knowing what it's going to, knowing what the experience is like are two different things. And so a lot of times what I do is I will talk to individuals that have been newly diagnosed with cancer to talk about some of the more subtle things or to talk about what it's really, you know, what it feels like, or, you know, make myself, I make myself available for text message or a call, you know, in the middle of the night, just because, you know, things happen to your body and you're wondering and you're panicked about it. And I want to be that person that can be there as a resource. So um, I'm cancer free. Um, it'll be five years at the end of December, and um, one of my platforms is, um, you know, talking and doing public speaking regarding my cancer journey and helping other people. Yeah, it's so cool, and, you know, my mom's a 30-plus year breast cancer survivor, and um, it's just, it's very cool to see somebody conquer it, like you, and um, it, it lends to you know, in your industry and and every entrepreneur, I think you always hear start with your why, you know, Simon Sinek wrote an amazing book about that. But, you know, I remember specifically your kind of catalyst for getting the job in the first place in order to pay for school and grad school and everything mm -hmm. uh, was kind of your motivating factor. So if you're willing to just kind of share, you know, the, the idea of sacrificing and the idea of you know, what you need to do in order to succeed, because we hear all these amazing people, everyone in this book has accomplished a lot of success in his or her own life. And yet the truth of the matter is that if we hung out with them the entire journey, there's no mm -hmm. way we, first of all, we'd have way more respect for them. And second of all, we probably would like be like, our problems aren't as bad as we think they are compared to this other person. And so just share maybe, you know, <clears throat> what was that motivating factor? Why did you do it? And then for people that are out there, how do you help them and your team kind of refocus on staying focused on the windshield rather than the rear view mirror. Yeah, yeah. You know, for me, I just always knew that there was something more. I came from a family of five kids. My mom, Puerto Rican, we moved to the States. Um, you know, we, we were able to get by, but I'm, I come from a family that, you know, no one was ever telling me go to college. Never, ever did those words come out of my parents' mouths. And I just looked to my friends and I saw what they were doing. And I, um, there was a lot of um, uh, violence in my house growing up, you know, a lot of yelling, a lot of, um, you know, um, uh, um, physical, you know, discipline sure. and that was really a tough environment so my way of coping was to leave the house to surround myself with people that had what I wanted and so they inspired me and so what I say to people today is you know um, your past or where you come from in no way has to define who you can be or what your potential is, because when I was growing up, I just thought I would get married and, you know, and, and it's nothing um, and just kind of like I had I had a small vision for myself. But as I hung out with people and as I surrounded my myself with people that had a greater vision, all of a sudden my vision expanded. And that's what we try to teach our team. Um, so, you know, for me, I got married um, and I, you know, had a baby right away. Um, but, you know, I my friends were gonna go to college, so I was gonna go to college. And I worked at McDonald's, um, I worked full time at McDonald's so I could pay my way. Um, I just figured you do whatever it takes, you just hunker down. I don't, I'm a kind of a tough cookie, you know, Lane, sometimes. Mm -hmm. I just don't accept excuses. I don't because I know what I've had to do to achieve success and I know what I've had to do to move forward and I worked full time. Um, then I had the baby um, and I raised my son and things didn't work out with my husband. And so I was a full time mommy. I was a full time student going to the University of Illinois and I was working full time. And that is what I had to do. And was it tough? The answer is yes. It was it was tough. There were times when um, you know money was really, really tight. 
Um, my ex-husband at the time, you know, he was not paying child support. I wasn't getting any type of support from him. It was all on me. Um, and there were times when I had to call my mom and say, mom, you know, hey, could I come over? Um, I don't have any food at all. You know, the cupboards are bare. And so um, I just did whatever it took. And, um, and I have found that that's the way I've always operated throughout my entire life. Uh, and, you know, even wanting to get my, my master's degree, um, I just saw, again, I, I, when I knew that I wanted to go into human resources, I asked the admissions director at the U of I, at the um, Institute of Labor and Industrial Relations, I said, well, what does it take? to be admitted into this program. And she laid out what it would take to be admitted. And I said, okay, that's what I'm gonna do. So, you know, a, a tip for everybody is, you know, what is it, identify what is it that you wanna do, talk to the people that have what you want, and then follow the plan. Mm -hmm. Follow what it is that they say that it takes. And so that's that's basically what I did to, uh, to and when I look back, Today, I've talked, you know, to people and I've talked to friends and they're like, how did you do it, Brenda? When I look back at what I did and how I managed my time, I'm like thinking to myself, wow, um, how did I do it? But when you want it bad enough, you make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, Brenda. And um, what I want to do in the next, you know, five minutes or so is let's transition for what can we do to support you? Because... I think a lot of times people will look at other people who are creating success and either say, oh, they're just doing it for their own self. They want a nicer car. They want a this or that. And the reality is that heart-centered entrepreneurs, you know, everybody involved in this book, we don't do it for that reason. Do we want better things? Of course we do. Do we want a nicer life for ourselves and our family? Of course we do. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, you know, God literally says, I have a plan to provide for you. And give you an abundant life. So there's nothing wrong with that. I think one thing that you do better than than everybody else is you really lead with that mentality um, of serving. And there's this servant um, aura around you in every single thing you do. And so what I want to do for the next few minutes is really allow us and everybody watching to serve you for, for a little bit. So you are moving in the direction of now speaking all around. You already do that, but you're wanting to increase, you know, your platforms. Yep. because of the message that you can share not because you want like i did early in my career um you know egotistically to be on stage um it's because now i know the message that i have is changing people and that's what you're doing and that's the motivating factor for you so share with us what you're looking for because somebody on here hopefully has that for you mm -hmm. an ideal client for you because you're a network marketing professional and you, you're building a team and you have amazing products that can help. And there might be somebody watching this that is their, you know, um, network news channel that you watched, right? The primetime show. This might mm -hmm. be that for them. They're sitting there watching this and you could be the, the savior for them. So be selfish for a little bit. And, and what what is your ask? What do you need from our community or everybody watching today? Well, no, you said it, Lane. I am expanding my brand, and I really, really would love to be able to speak and to share. So speaking opportunities would be wonderful so that I could get the message out about, you know, overcoming, about having hope, about, you know, um, you know, the journey through cancer, just overcoming. I want to be able to touch people. I want to touch women especially and give them hope. So um, speaking, potential speaking engagements would be awesome. And then I'm also looking for, you know, um, what we have isn't the, the, the miracle pill or the miracle mm -hmm. thing, right? Sure. But it gave me my life back. And when people look at me today, they don't see a person that was dying. They don't see a person that had a nine year journey where I just was existing. And I'm looking for, you know, if, if someone has someone that they know in their life, that's where I was. Um, those are the types of people that I would love to connect with because I'd love to be able to give them hope. And thank you, Lane, for, you know, what you shared um, because I do, um, I'm not Pollyanna. Um, people sometimes say, man, Brenda, why are you always smiling? Um, why are you always so happy? Why wouldn't I be happy? I mean, why Amen. wouldn't I? I mean, I am living. I am grateful. I've had the most amazing life. Um, you know, God has been so good in my life. And I just want to share that forward. So thank you for acknowledging that you see that in my life and how I 
um, you know, lead my life. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember actually at the event that you're going to now, um, I was there last year and we ran into each other and I love your commitment to continually investing into yourself to become the person you need for your team and for you and for your life. And so uh, it looks like we have Rodney on. Rodney, we'll, we'll get with you in a second, brother. Um, and so, uh, Brenda, we just appreciate everything that you embody. Um, for everyone watching this, if you are struggling and afraid to reach out to somebody because of a health concern, reach out to Brenda. Um, Rodney actually kind of has a, a family history as well. Um, a little bit about, uh, I won't spoil anything, Rodney, but, you know, the reality is in today's world, we live too short and we die too long. And um, it, it's an unfortunate situation. And now in today's world, entrepreneurship allows us hopefully the ability to create the life we want on a financial level because we are actually living longer. For those that take control of our health and actually do that, we've got to figure out how in the world do we live to be 80, 90, 100 years old um, from a financial level. And so, you know, Brenda, you're doing amazing things in the world. You're just at the beginning of your journey. I already know that, even though you've accomplished so much, you're about to, to get into the fast lane at, at a speed we can't even keep up with. And so, um, you know, we love and appreciate you. Hope you enjoy the event. I'm glad you're investing time with Eric and uh, Tony Robbins out there. And I think Sir Richard Branson as well. Yeah, so yeah. Um, a very cool event to be at. And you will be at our event as well once we launch that. Um, so any last parting words for you, Brenda, before uh, we let you go live your life and do everything you're going to do this weekend out in Vegas? I just want to sh say thank you, Lane, for uh, it's been a joy to be included in this project. The authors that have contributed to this book are amazing. And I know that you said it when Ron was on, but everybody that's contributed has a story. And I mm -hmm. just know that the people that buy this book, that they're going to find something within those chapters that's going to speak to them and that's going to make a difference in their lives. So um, thank you for including me in this awesome, awesome project. And I'm just looking forward to seeing how many lives we can bless and change. Hey Amen. That's what it's all about. And so good little plug by Brenda. Um, no, but seriously, guys, you know, here's the thing that sounds like a self, you know, promotion and we do have to in our own businesses, but the reality is the words that are in this book will change your life. Um, and whoever story it is, we don't know. The reason we bring a lot of people together, everyone has their own individual powerful story, but it might not be the story you need to hear at this particular time in your life. Maybe it's Brenda's, maybe it's Rodney's, maybe it's Ron's, or maybe you read one of their chapters and it doesn't resonate with you at this particular time in your life because you're on a different path. And so the reason we do this whole compilation idea is somebody's will. And in order to read them and to hopefully be changed in your world, You've got to buy it in order to read it. It's 99 cents. <laughs> we're, not, we're not gouging you for this thing. We want you to read the, the, the book um, for what's in it. So, Brenda, we appreciate you. Um, go enjoy the rest of your event. We'll be in touch because I know you and I have to do some keynote stuff together. So yep. um, after we're done with the launch, just send me a message once you're back. Whoop, once you're back. Um, there you go. Life happens. Uh, once you're back hey. from Vegas. And let's find time to, to work on that together. Sounds good. Okay, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks. Take care. Thanks, Brenda.